We'll now move to our public hearing items, and our first item is the Text Amendment 2024-03. This is to the ULDC, Mr. Bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, Commissioners. Myself and Mr. Davenport will be presenting a little bit tonight, uh, as you heard this morning. The two main focuses of the Text Amendment are access to a lot of counts on a single point entry uh, into a subdivision and the addition of a tree bank. Since this morning, um, staff's also looked at the water system requirements requiring new or expanding private water systems to have a permanent on-site generator based <coughs> power. This is in the packet that's there in front of you. Um, the tree bank has been expanded to include not just oak trees, but oak, bay, magnolia, or cypress trees measuring 8 inches dbh, or any tree over 24 inches dbh, with the exclusion of pine and pecan trees. Again, that's just for the tree bank, um, not for agricultural purposes. Really just to catch y'all up, the highlights are what we are proposing before you. This is the same draft we had this morning plus those highlights. All those highlights are reflected in the full copy next to the county clerk. It is in the room. We're happy to answer or address any concerns that you may have, but pending your consideration, we do believe it's ready for you. From an input standpoint, we did have um, Mrs. Quarterman call this afternoon asking to be updated based on our presentation this morning and our we did send her the draft document. Um, I believe they looked at it. I think their concerns are just the timing uh, within the process for public comment. And also they had a concern about the pecan trees being added to the exempt list. So beyond that, we think they're justified. But if you want to go further, we're willing. We have the document in the room. But again, pending your consideration, we believe it's ready for it. Commissioners, any questions? I think we've had a little bit of discussion about this. So Expansions meaning uh, also includes existing uh, system that you can choose to upgrade. I take it. Yes, sir. So expansion. If you if you add a tap, we want to be now involved with you in making sure that that system reflects these standards. So we have a very um, strict line on purpose to make sure if they go to expand, that we now are are at the table requiring the generator and the, the generator base back. Excuse me, Commissioner. There are 11. The way we 
anticipate this working is if the commission moves forward, staff would take these 11, get them into a format that we believe is the ones that we want, let the county manager review those, let her make sure she wants these as policy goals, and then give those to the development community, those who are actually designing these subdivisions. So if you had an 80 lot subdivision that, for example, was a mile and a half away from county water, we anticipate the connection to county water to be a preference on here, but a mile and a half is obviously a very, very long distance, an unreasonable connection requirement for that water system. So our recommendation at TRC level will be the county manager that we take that policy goal and we do not require that for that development. And that development moves on with other policy goals, but that one would just be struck. We don't require a variance for that. We don't require a rezoning condition. It will be something that with the county manager's backing, we would have the ability to not require. Each subdivision, depending on their situation, will be analyzed on that case-by-case -case basis. But we expect those policy goals, which these are our, this is the most current draft I can give you, but because this is new, we wanted to put something down. But ultimately, yes, sir, we realize that before we give it to our supervisor, we need to make sure these are cleaned up and paired up to reflect no conflict between what we do and do not recommend. But that is how we anticipate that this would work, is for an 80-lot subdivision, we would analyze it based on these conditions on the TRC's stake and the county manager's stake, we would appropriately address or not address that. If an applicant was um, aggravated, did not agree with us, they can challenge our interpretation to the Board of Appeals, which is something they can always do as an administrative official. So they still have an avenue, but with this new process, we just did not believe putting them in the code as a variance we thought that would be too cumbersome. And so this is where we felt like we had place that will be a helpful start. Okay. Yeah. To, to, for, for me, to clarify in my mind, we're talking about the 80 lots, the one point of ingress and egress, um, and then you could, then you mentioned if we were, for example, a, a mile and a half away from county water, um, wouldn't the water issue and the sewer issue be addressed through the rezoning of lot sizes rather than necessarily saying that if there's a number of lots? I mean, does that make sense? I mean, typically we're looking at rezoning cases, and I know what we have done in the past, and we have a concern about high density lots in a more rural setting where we know that we're not going to be able to get uh, utility services to, yes, sir. then we're setting ourselves up, basically, if we're looking at it from that standpoint, it appears to me, for more private water systems. This doesn't change our 1,000-foot lot connection requirement that we have on the books. This does not change that. So any subdivision within 1,000 feet would still be a connection requirement. That does not change this. What we get into is we have to try to accommodate for both the urban and the rural sections of the county. Right. And this is where we arrive at. It's something that staff could do a case-by-case -case analysis because we recognize unless you double the rules and have one set for water <coughs> sewer and one set for well septic, that would be a solution to that, but we chose, we didn't choose that path. We chose administrative case-by-case -case versus a set of rules for water sewer and a set of rules for well septic. I, mean, I, I can live with my concern is it's just overburdening to a certain degree staff on having to make some of these decisions when really the decision to me is based on a zoning decision and how you apply that piece of property and the, and the proper zoning to it that wouldn't necessarily, you can still have uh, a subdivision that's got one and a half, one to one and a half to two acre lots, you still have 80 allocated for the parking lot. Yes, and Mr. Chairman, the the zoning is still going to control the lot size. So That's if you have a R1 zoning, you're still going to have a one acre lot minimum. This right. doesn't exempt you from that. The only time you're getting into that conversation is if really you do a PD and it's up to the commission to set that lot size. Okay. But R21 is still going to have a half acre lot size. So if you had a conflict with this 15,000 square foot goal and you have R21 zoning, that's not on your radar because you still, you can only have half an acre. It's allowed. Right, but if we're, if we're a mile and a half away from our services, our utilities, and then we approve R21 lots, yes, sir. 
that the only way you're going to serve it is water is with a private system. Sir, you're right. You're right. But that's kind of what I'm trying to study here. I mean, we can look at it, and we've had these discussions, and, and we can set precedents from the standpoint that we're very, very cautious about these high density lots in a more rural setting, and we're looking for larger properties, larger lots, which to me would be. Thank you. 